Well, good afternoon folks, welcome back to the channel. My name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again uh, for the first of this week's reviews. Um, we're in the United States, we're on the west coast in the state of California, and you're looking at San Diego International Airport in California in the USA, Kilo Sierra Alpha November. This is a new payware scenery, a collaboration between Beautiful Model of the World and AmSim. You're looking at version 1.1 for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. Download is 1.1 gigs and it installs at 2.62 gigs. Currently it's only available from Orbix, but I suspect that at some point it may well be available on Sim Market. So I'll give you the prices. Euros, 18 euros and 6 cents, which equates to roughly 19 dollars and 15 cents US or 15 pounds and 64 pence UK. Now the Euro, US and UK prices are all estimates taken from the Australian dollar and they do not include tax or VAT which you of course must add um, depending on which country you're, you are in when you make your purchase that amount will vary. Here in the UK it's 20% um, so you'll need to add that. So let's look at the list of features so the airport, as you see it here, is based on the 2023 data, which is a really good thing. So this is up to date. Added a light version of Kilo Rambas Zulu Yankee, the North Island Naval Air Station, known as Halsey Field Airport. So that's been added. You have a detailed terminal area. Now, the detail is actually just in the main terminal center, but we'll look at that. You've got animated jetways. Custom ground markings, high resolution custom ground textures, dirt and other details. Surrounding buildings are fully modelled. Custom animated runway guard lights. Animated and static people. Airline codes assigned to each parking gate and it's fully compatible with the FSLTL traffic add-on. So it's quite a substantial build here and you've got everything um, evening, uh, even off airport here and looking at the marina and various buildings and the whole place sits really well. Um, just before we um, finish up with features and the intro here I want to just make a note and, and tell you that we I had a problem installing this um, and the problem was well known um, on the uh, Orbix forum. Basically um, the Orbix Central installation software installs it to an, another community folder that's misspelled so although the install works, you couldn't actually see the scenery. And I've actually posted a, a solution on the Orbix forum. Um, but basically, if you go into the um, community folder and then go up one level, you'll see another community folder with three M's in it. Spelt community with three M's. Inside there, you'll find the scenery folder. And the solution is to cut that folder out and move it into your correct community folder and then delete the old folder that's misspelled and the scenery will show up. Um, I've spoken to Orbix about this. Um, it should be actually corrected by today, Monday. By the time this review goes out, you shouldn't have that issue. But in case you do, that's the solution. Look for the two community folders, the one that's misspelled, incorrectly spelled. Go into that folder, grab the scenery folder from there and put it into your correct community folder and then delete the misstelled one and you should be fine and that's just in case the install doesn't work for you so there you go that's a list of features and history this is a really nice airport um, it's well known a challenging approach and we'll go into that in a minute um, but it's quite well modeled I've had a quick look over it and it's very very nice actually anybody who flies in Southern California is going to enjoy this so let's go and talk about some history now so, history. San Diego International Airport, Kilo Sierra Alpha November, formerly known as Lindbergh Field, is a public use international airport owned and operated by the San Diego County Regional Airport Authority. The airport is located 3 miles or 4.8 kilometers northwest of downtown San Diego in the state of California in the United States. The airport covers 663 acres or 268 hectares and is ranked the third busiest airport in California in terms of passenger traffic. San Diego International Airport is the busiest single runway airport in the world. The airport's landing approach is well known for its close proximity to the skyscrapers of downtown San Diego, 
and can sometimes prove a challenge to pilots owing to the relatively short usable runway landing area, steep descent angle over the crest of Bankers Hill and shifting winds on the landing approach. Prior to the development of the airport, the area was a Delta River outlet for the San Diego River into the San Diego Bay, which was then rerouted to terminate into the Pacific Ocean parallel to Mission Bay. The airport is near the site of Ryan Airlines factory, and nothing to do with the Irish airline Ryanair, but it is not the same as Dutch Flats Airport, the Ryan airfield where Charles Lindbergh first flight tested the Spirit of St. Louis aircraft before his historic 1927 transatlantic flight. Inspired by Lindbergh's flight and excited to have made his plane, the city of San Diego passed a bond issue in 1928 for the construction of a two-runway municipal airport. Lindbergh encouraged the building of the airport and agreed to lend his name to it. The new airport, dedicated on the 16th of August 1928, was San Diego Municipal Airport Lindbergh Field, with 140 Navy and 82 Army planes involved in a flyover. The airport gained international airport status in 1934. In April 1937, the United States Coast Guard Air Base was commissioned next to the airfield. Coast Guard's fixed-wing aircraft used Lindbergh Field until the mid-1990s when their fixed-wing aircraft were assigned elsewhere. Pacific Southwest Airlines, or PSA, established its headquarters in San Diego and started service at Lindbergh Field in 1949. American Airlines had a non-stop flight to Dallas and one to El Paso. Aside from that, non-stop flights did not reach beyond California and Arizona. The first scheduled flights using jets at Lindbergh Field were in September 1960, again American Airlines Boeing 720s to Phoenix and United Airlines 720s to San Francisco. Non-stop flights to Chicago started in 1962 and to New York in 1967. In June of 1988, British Airways inaugurated a service to London's Gatwick Airport via Los Angeles aboard a Boeing 747 and McDonnell Douglas DC-10 aircraft. This was the airport's first transatlantic flight. Inbound travellers had to clear customs in Los Angeles, which made the journey cumbersome. The San Diego Airport's customs facility had not been used in seven years, and the US Customs Service said that it did not meet the latest security requirements. The Port District performed the necessary upgrades, allowing the facility to reopen in 1989. Nevertheless, British Airways ended their route in November 1990. Today, however, British Airways operate the Boeing 777 service to San Diego from London Heathrow. The authority changed the airport's name from Lindbergh Field to San Diego International Airport in 2003. The airport has two terminals with two east and west concourses each and 48 gates in total. Finally, the airport operates a single runway 2709 with most takeoffs and landings using runway 27, a difficult and often low approach, exciting the passengers who mostly think that they are too low. The Coast Guard Air Station is near the southeast corner of the airport. So there you go, a bit of history for you. Um, this guy place has been around some time and used by various um, government authorities and um, now quite an exciting place. So let's look at runways now. So runways, and as you can see we've lowered the lighting. It's quarter past six in the evening local time. It's um, early October 2023. San Diego International Airport operates a single runway 2709 measuring 9,401 feet or 2,865 meters and is constructed from an asphalt concrete mix. The airport lies at an elevation of 17 feet or 5.2 meters and sits in the GMT UTC minus 8 hours time zone. Now California observes daylight saving time as does the UK and currently both airports have moved ahead one hour from their current time and this airport is currently therefore eight hours behind the UK. So both ends of the runway feature high intensity runway lighting, medium intensity approach lighting system, center line lighting, touchdown zone lighting and precision approach path indicators. Here runway 27 has them on the right side and the other end, runway 09, has them on the left. 
Now the runway is also completely grooved. So here we are looking down the throat of runway 27 and here you can see the huge displaced threshold here used by aircraft taking off. And here you can also see the high intensity lighting, centre line lighting, there's the touchdown zone lighting just as it is. And obviously this area is enclosed in red because you don't want to be landing on it. You actually land on the touchdown zone and the extension is to allow takeoffs on heavy jets. So features, runway 27 has a localizer approach and it also has an RNAV GPS Y approach option or an RNAV RNP Z approach option. And there's also the sweet water visual approach, which is another option shown on the charts. Let's have a quick look at the other end, runway 09. So here we are looking down the photo of runway 09. Now 09 features a standard instrument landing system with Y and Z approach options. You also have RNAV GPS Y approach and RNAV RMP Z approach and again the Sweetwater visual approach just as you do at the other end. So the landing distance available on this runway is 7,280 feet and that's probably because of the um, extended um, threshold at the other end. So 7,280 7, feet or 2,219 meters on the LDA. And lastly, just to note here, there's an airport curfew in effect from 11.30 p.m. until 6.30 a.m. local time. No departures are permitted during that time. However, arrivals may come in all the way through 24 hours. So here you can see we've got approach lighting. Again, you've got touchdown zone lighting, center line lighting, and here are the pappies, this time on the left side. Also in this view you get a good look at the fact that you've got plenty of green centerline lighting as well to guide you around the airport during the, um, the darkness hours. Okay, so that does it for runways, now let's do jetways. Okay, jetway, jetway test. Here we are at uh, San Diego, stand number 47 right in front of the terminal. I've got the APU on which is why you can hear the sounds and we've got the um, ground power unit out of the way. Let's test the jetway. It's a nice motion, it's not too fast or too slow. The jetway visually looks really good. The wheels turn, there are no stairs to go into the ground, which is fine. It's a really lovely motion, actually. Okay, that looks pretty good, apart from the fact it's gone through the skin, like almost every jetway does. That's a really good um, motion. Let's go a little closer. So that's a pretty good connection there. Okay, it has gone through the skin, but um, the jetway looks really good. And interestingly enough, just thought I'd show you this, because there are stairs to the side of the jetway, but they're actually in the raised position. So that's quite interesting. So there's a view from the other side, it looks perfectly good to me. And here's a view from inside the uh, jetway looking into the aircraft. As you can see, sort of on the right side it has gone through, it's not really a problem at all. But uh, it's really visually matched really quite well, both down here to the side of the aircraft and the door is not obstructed in any way as well, really good. And there we are looking out of the jetway towards the jetway from inside the aircraft. All of which looks pretty good to me. It's a really nice fit. Okay, so let's disconnect the jetway. As you can see, the hood springs back. But I, I, I don't know what it is, but I like this jetway. I really like the motion. The, the speed is right. The wheels turn. And not only do they turn on the ground, but they actually the wheels rotate, which is good. And uh, I like the idea of the stairs being in the raised position, so you don't see them going to the concrete. Very, very nice animation. So that does it for jetways. That's the test out of the way. This was stand 47. Let's get to the main tour now and have a good look at this airport. So, starting with an airside tour from, um, from the runway 09 end, let's just have a look over the terminals here. 
and uh, yeah it looks nice you can see some weathering on the ramp the ramp looks good the airport looks nicely detailed plenty of jetways and they're all as detailed as the one we saw during the test some nice foliage and trees there to the right a big car park And here you've got more construction work going on, which is as per um, the real world at the moment. Now it looks good. I mean, it's been beautifully modelled too, which is what we kind of expect from this, this pair of um, developers who get together. It really does look good. And again, you can see it's such a beautiful location around here. Here we're coming to the 27 displaced threshold area. And we just go over the car park here. Oh, it's great. Some modeling's been added here. Some of them are default buildings. And again, some nice road modelling, palm trees. They haven't left um, a lot of it to photo scenery, which is what I really like. Here's the Coast Guard station, helicopters. Some lovely models, and there you can see inside the, the, um, the hangar there. So let's head back the other way, but this time towards the land side area. So a little bit of photo scenery down there, you know, but it works quite well. You still get these things, I'm afraid, um, with the default scenery from um, the Bing data. It just doesn't seem to be able to model it very well. But uh, yeah, no, it's okay. I just love the fact that they've modeled the roads in 3D. They've not left it to photo scenery and add the palm trees sort the foliage out and I mean it just looks lovely really does look nice as you can see now we head towards the car park and the terminal structure It's very nice, really is. Try and slow down here a bit. Well, it looks wonderful, doesn't it? The detail is good. Oh, we've got passengers, some of which are animated, plenty of taxis. And this is what I like about sceneries. I know that you're not going to see this much as a pilot and many people aren't interested, I get that. But it does look good. Visually, it's just very, very nice. Everything down to the signs. Beautifully done. There you are, British Airways and Japan Airlines also fly non-stop to Japan from here. It's very nice indeed. As you can see, there's internal development as well to look at, which we'll, we will have a look at. But it's just really lovely. More passengers. Let's just go up a little bit this time, have a look at the, um, from higher up. Very nicely done, really nicely done. There's part of the landside car park with the lights and cones, buses. And here you have a covered car park as well.
More work being done here, looks like a landside car park to me. So just a quick run back the other way, so we can look at the other part on the upper level. I mean, it's beautifully done, the concrete structure is really, really good. Oh, it's very nicely done. There you go, you can see the escalators that come up. More people here. I mean, this is really wonderful. It's really nice. Just love it. The really clear road signs, I mean the place really does look as though it's, um, <laughs> it's pretty real, it's very nicely done. Okay, so let's get back here so I to the stands and let's have a look at what's on offer here for you pilots. Here's my uh, Phoenix Airbus A320 parked on uh, stand here. Actually got the jetway retracted this time. But here you can see um, there's a bit of ground clutter, not an awful lot, just enough. Um, the safe areas are properly delineated as well. Various trucks and bits and pieces. This is the part of the terminal I believe that's developed inside. We'll have a look in a bit. And just another quick shot there showing you the main building extension there off to the left. And as you look down the stands there you can see the various jetways. So as we track here side along the stands, um, I mean it looks great doesn't it? It really does. Not so much a ground clutter that you did see on some of the other airports, but then it's probably a good thing. It means you don't have to worry about it all when you're bringing your aircraft into park. But very nice, there's some modelling in there as well. But I like the fact that you've got the doors at the end of the jetways as well. I mean, the modelling is really top notch. And here as we go across to the other terminal, Again, some really nice detail, including signage down there. Everything including the air conditioning units on top of the building. The stands, taxiways, stand numbers, all properly delineated. Very nice. There's the old um, satellite that's quite very, very rustic, very modern, rustically modelled just as it should be. I mean, it looks good. It looks really good. No complaints at all. Can't see any anomalies at the moment. It just looks great. So here we come to the um, construction. Have a little look at it. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But here you can see they've done it properly. Airside fence, the whole thing's been built landside, which is what normally happens in many airports, certainly with the ones I've worked at normally, where if something is going to be constructed that's going to be airside, they fence it all off and build up landside, and then when it's complete, they remove the fencing, and it becomes airside and it gets inspected, which I've done many times. I think this is going to be a complete landside operation. But again, the, the, the attention to detail is amazing. Here's your crane, um, and here's the various bits of material that they need to complete the work. So let's head across the runway. Down there to the right, you can see the signage on the runway looks fine. Here's the control tower. And there to the left is the fuel farm. 
and again even over here I mean you know the detail nothing's really been left to chance to see I've got a feeling there is internal development but there's the tower from the outside looks really good and as you can see the other side of the airport here is completely developed as well let's go inside the tower and there you go you've got some internal modeling in the tower so let's just have a little whiz around this area see what we're looking at it looks good doesn't it you've got lots of bits and pieces sitting here various containers fence line down there here we are land side of this area I love the palm trees there's extensive use of solar panels here at this airport as you would expect being in Southern California they get a lot of sunshine multi-story car park and again the roads have not been left to photo scenery it's all been done in 3d I do love the trees <laughs> visually it looks great and here you can see I mean the buildings are, are really nice in this area that probably doesn't get much attention I mean you just they, it's done it's, they've done it signature flight support okay signature is a private company or, that has a facility at almost every major airport certainly at where I worked at Heathrow and Gatwick signature were there and they generally operate VIP flights and again some really nice development okay got lots of default stuff here got a couple of private jets there a helicopter and a light aircraft So as we come across to the runway here, you, you can see the various markings, runway signs and wigwags down there as well that all work. Very nice. I can't really leave this area without having a look at some of the off airport bits and pieces here that have been done because they have been included. So here we are approaching the marina just to the south of the airport here nice cruise ships um, and various boats there at anchor in, 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 in the different locations there okay so as you can see from the right some of this is Bing data not properly done but at least they have attempted here to sort of merge this to give you a reasonable sort of look at it hopefully one day the um, the data the big data of this area will get improved so you, you lose these little anomalies but again not caused by um, the developer at all but as you can see what they have done where it's necessary they've done 3d roads um, and beautifully modeled buildings here's the Sheraton Hotel very nicely done indeed and again going across the, the, the um, marina is a, another sh version of the Sheraton over there on to the left and the swimming pool down there we we'll do with that right now So as we cross the bay back to the airport, I mean, this, this gives you quite a nice overview of what's been done and just how it looks. Um, they've done a lot and I'm very impressed with it, really impressed with it. So there you go, um, a, a fairly detailed overview of the airport stands and the, uh, the detail let's turn the lighting down to dusk 
and then we'll go also go inside the terminal and have a look at how it looks from the outside and from the inside. Okay, 25 past 6 in the evening local time here in San Diego. As I said, it's October, mid-October 2023. And here we are looking at the lighting. The lighting came on five minutes ago. Um, and as you can see, it's lovely. It's very subtle, just what we expect. Um, and the airport does indeed come to life in the evening. And there's another view just looking down the runway. There you can see the lighting, as indeed we've discussed. And uh, the green centerline lights all over the place, blue airfield edge lights, taxiway signage, plenty of it. Um, and all of the parking areas are really nicely subtly lit. Let's get down to where the aircraft is and have a close look. So here we are on stand 47 where the aircraft is parked. Um, and doesn't the building look nice? Um, but the stand lighting, as you can see, is perfectly adequate. There's loads of it. There really isn't a problem at all here. And they're looking down towards the other stands. It all looks pretty good. It really does. So here's a view from inside the cockpit. Just thought I'd let you have a look at this. This is what you'll see when you park up on stand 47 around quarter past six in the evening here. A really, really nice view here. You can see inside the terminal through the misted glass. We've got passengers. We'll have a look at those in a moment. There's a view through the captain's window and looking across the first officer's side. So a quick overview there from a higher level, just looking inside the terminal. All looks pretty good. Let's go and have a quick look inside. First of all, just a quick view from the outside looking in. The glass is misted so you get this really nice effect. So we've got some static and one or two animated passengers and we've got this really beautiful chandelier here. Let's pop inside. So here's a quick view some people, tables and chairs. Um, fairly basic here, the salad bar and everything to the left there has not actually been completely done, but all looks pretty good. There's a nice view, close up of some statics and we've got a young lady in the background there chatting away on a mobile phone. And some more um, Shops, bits and pieces over there, cafes, not fully developed, no staff or anywhere, goods on show, but there you go, happy if it's okay, no problem. Stairways to the upper level, and a last look back the other way. So let's go to the upper level. So firstly a quick shot there showing you the escalator and you've got seating um, up there as well for other people. And here's some nice structured seating. Would have been nice to see maybe one or two people sitting there, but uh, no, nope, that's fine. Looks good. So let's have a quick tour across here. Looks like it's pretty much the same. But here you've got more seating inside this glass area here. Just a quick shot there, show you the two seating areas, one inside the glass and one outside. And lastly, just a quick shot there showing you inside from the top roof level. And there's a full aerial shot there, showing you the airside area. So here, looking at this other part of the building, you can see there's some work being done in here. And here we are inside that um, area. We're just taking a little run across. You can see seating left and right. No people in here. But there's a lot of detail in this airport. And so I should imagine it's a case of um, a balance between frame rate and detail. But here's the central concourse here. And wow, doesn't it look good? Signage. And here we've got some people here at the gates at this end. So this is obviously Southwest Airlines. Some check-in desks, some great signage. And it all looks very good. <laughs> 
it's nice it's very very nice indeed you even got a check-in agent there but again it, it this just strikes a, attention to detail it's fantastic I, I certainly believe they've got the balance right I'm having no real frame rate issues at all even moving the camera fast or slow and I've got pretty much all of my detail up at ultra it just looks great the lighting's excellent the sources are correct as well the light sources and here we are looking in from the outside um, and again you've got this lovely misty glass effect um, it, it just looks great very impressed with it so there's one of the jetways nicely lit it's very nice to see lighting there in the doorway so let's just go outside have a look at some of the taxiway signage as the sun gets lower and lower Here you can see the wigwags. As you can see, the lighting here is excellent. Correctly done. Everything's as it should be. Signage is good. It all looks very, very nice indeed. Here you've got the uh, windsock just there. And as the lighting gets lower and lower, you can see the ramp comes up and does come up a little bit. just have a look at this area of the ramp up to the right there you can see the Sheraton Hotel has lighting on it which is nice and there again you can see internal modeling very nice this is inside that satellite building no people in this side but um, again a very nice internal modeling as indeed it should be so as we come outside again we come across to the other satellite and also there in the distance you've got the construction and the lighting is beautiful it's um, realistically some of the best lighting I've seen. These guys really are up there in terms of development capability. Visually looks stunning. More internal detail inside that satellite there. And here as you come close to this construction, which should be lit as indeed it should be, and it is. It's better as you get closer and as we come up um, aviation law says that anything over 300 feet should have lights on top and there you can see the cranes have got flashing lights just as they should be okay so a slow tour of landside again the lighting is excellent whole thing looks really nice beautiful beautifully done all the signage is very clear more animated people and you've even got weathering on the outside of this construction here too it's just it's lovely as we come down here all the signs are nicely lit the light sources again are correct no globes floating around plenty of lighting you've got this lovely effect here it's just beautiful it really is very nice indeed It's just, it's wonderful, it really is. So tracking back on the other level here, nice to see some of the cars have got lights turned on. 
trucks actually but uh, oh, it's impressive it really is So out over the car parks, a nice car down there with two bicycles on the top and another one. Plenty of vehicle variety which is another really good thing about some of these sceneries. And again no Asobo globes floating around. And there's just a look at some of the signage as we come through. And again more lighting on the buildings in the distance there. Done a wonderful job. This car park's a bit dark, not sure why. Maybe just something they've decided to leave. But again, more work here on the land side part of the other terminal, passengers again. And some really nice subtle lighting. As we come across the building to airside, the um, dynamic, beautiful lighting is continued here on the airside ramp. So coming landside here, just a quick look at the hotels. Okay, one or two Sobo Globes there, and of course we've got the dodgy Bing data scenery. But the hotels look great, and some nice lighting there. And again, just lovely, really nice. Not so much on the marina, but it all looks pretty nice. So there's an overview of the airport at Dan, and it looks pretty much at night time now, but let's bring the lighting right down and have a look. So now 10 p.m. local time, it's well and truly dark. And as you can see, the lighting is lovely. It's just, there really isn't a lot to complain about here. Really does look good. And as we look out across the bay there, I mean, the effect is wonderful. You've got um, some very subtle lighting there. Some of the marina is lit, not all of it, but it's just enough to give you a little bit of an ambient kind of atmospheric um, feeling about this. So just a quick overview of the ramp at night. I'm not going to spend too much time at night, really, because it's, um, I mean, um, dusk only lasts about 25, 30 minutes. Um, and now we're back into the night time. Daylight drops down pretty quickly here at um, in Southern California, but again, as you can see, plenty of lighting for navigating around. It's really good. There's a quick view from land side. Not much different from what we saw before as the lighting went down, but it all looks very, very good. Really, no problem at all. So a quick pass over from land side here. Here you get to see the. Um, Landside development in all its glory with the lighting and to the left there you can see airside and how it looks as well It's really impressive I have to say it's a very very nice scenery And there in the distance you can see the control tower is lit up. That's really nice. <laughs> That's a very nice colouring. And there we are inside the tower looking out across the airport. Okay, time to bring the dawn up. Let's have a look at the dawn. Okay, just after 7am and we're looking towards the threshold of runway 09 here. Sun's behind us and you can see this lovely red glow that the effect that you get as the sun comes up. Um, reflecting on all of the buildings and the terminals here. Very nice indeed. And there's the sun coming up to the left. We're looking out across the bay. This is runway 27 threshold there. And the bridge in the distance. Very, very nice. Okay, 9am local time, we're back in the daylight, time to give you my conclusions and thoughts. Um, first of all, is it worth the money? Well, definitely, absolutely. Um, 18 euros or 19 dollars US or 15 pounds. Remember to add tax, 
um, and even with the tax it's still nowhere near as expensive as some of the airports um, I could quote an eastern developer who produces eastern airports where uh, they are nice but vastly overpriced um, but this I think is set about right the amount of work that's been done accurately reflects um, the price I think internally they've done just enough bear in mind you've got a lot of detail here so in order to, to keep the frame rate at reasonable level they had to strike a balance between the two and I think they've got that balance right the features are really nice the modeling is top-notch visually it looks great there's an ambience about the place um, you're just gonna love flying in and out of here it's really not gonna be an issue it's very very nice indeed it's a nice airport um, developed by two well-known people when they get together and um, they've done a number of airports many of which I've reviewed and uh, this is no exception it's a really nice piece of work and I've really no problem recommending it so there we are folks San Diego International Airport in California southern USA Kilo Sierra Alpha November to pay where scenery by a beautiful model of the world and AmSim's collaboration you're looking at version 1.1 for the PC download is 1.16 gig and it installs at 2.62 gigs currently only available from Orbix but uh, I no doubt it'll appear on Sim Market at some point um, if you install from Orbix using the Orbix central installer and you get a problem with the scenery not showing um, just refer to my um, statement at the beginning of the review about the community folder but um, I'm pretty sure that by the time this video goes out later tonight they will have fixed that issue so the price is 18 euros and 6 cents or 19 dollars 15 cents US or 15 pounds 64 pence UK and remember euro US and UK prices are all estimates converted from the Australian dollar and they do not include tax or VAT so you need to add that um, which will of course vary depending on what country you're in when you make your purchase but even with the VAT I think the price is wonderful loads of features lots to explore here if you fancy getting a helicopter or even a car out um, lots of features um, and uh, you're gonna have fun practicing the landing approach in over Bankers Hill so there you go folks thank you very much for joining me um, that's a fairly in-depth review of San Diego Airport the new scenery out I hope you've enjoyed it I hope it's helped you I've tried to have a really detailed look um, so I make no apologies for the length of this video um, it is important I think for people who are going to spend 20 euros or more on a scenery like this to have a good idea of what they're getting for their money but you've got two good developers who um, develop together on a regular basis who really know what they're doing and the result is a really nice rendition of this airport and again this is 2023 rendition so it's bang up to date and I have no problems in recommending it at all so this is Lee uh, your virtual airline pilot wrapping up the first of this week's reviews thank you very much for joining me and I'm um, happy to talk to you about any comments or anything you want to mention in the comments below um, I'm a single man operator I do this um, every week work fairly hard if you feel like supporting me um, buy me a coffee the link is in the description um, it's really cheap it's not much but it does help um, about 50% of the sceneries I get I pay for in order to review them some of the others I'm not yet enough um, subscribers to be able to warrant um, some companies giving me um, copies of scenery for review for free so I do spend quite a bit to make sure that you, the, the viewer on my channel, get the um, information you need to make the purchase, whether or not to make the purchase. So um, anything you can do to help me out, that would be great. So stay tuned for next, um, the next review, where we'll be looking at another payware scenery. This time it's only available on um, flightsim.to at the moment. We'll be looking at a Kajani airport in Finland, Echo Foxtrot Kilo, India. Another really nicely modelled airport at quite an attractive price. Um, I like Finland a lot, even in the summer, although a lot of people go up there to Rovinjami in the winter. And um, some of these airports are coming out now for this part of the world that look really good. So we're going to review Kajani and um, hopefully you'll enjoy that too. So thanks again for being with me. This is Lee saying bye for now. I'll see you in the next review. Take care. Bye-bye.